Okay, so in front of you, we've got our six sections, which you're familiar with. We've got our red sections, which are from our previous activity. We've got our amber sections, which are from um, last week's activity. And we've got our green sections, which are from our learning previously in the year. So I'm going to give you five minutes. If you just pause the recording, jot down your ideas, and then we'll share some um, feedback. Okay, going with the um, top left hand side, so last lesson. So how was Charlie presented as a character who wants to please people? Well, I went immediately with the quote that I really tried to see. Um, and remember when we did this in our appeal paragraph, we said about the adverb of really. So it's emphasising his determination. Um, the fact that he, he really tried to see something in the ink blots implied that he really wanted to impress the people that were there. Moving along. So earlier in the year, what can you uh, remember about Frankenstein's monster? So um, I put that, remember, it was a character by Mary Shelley. Um, it's a creation. Um, and just describing him, you know, the yellowish skin, the uh, watery glowing eyes, the flowing black hair and the black lips as well, You re really to emphasise his um, monstrous features. Moving along, so going to um, last week, what does Peel stand for? So we know it's point evidence, explain and link. So if we move down and we go towards the left, it says what structure do you use when answering an extended writing question on the presentation of a character? And again, we use that peel structure. Moving into the middle at the bottom, how could Charlie be viewed as a vulnerable character? Um, I think we see that he's vulnerable because he doesn't know actually why he's there. Um, no one's told him why he's there, so he seems really confused by this. Um, he also goes to night school, so he seems really vulnerable in what he's doing, and he believes the people that he's, that he's talking to. Um, and finally, moving across, um, when it says, how is an abuse of power presented in Frankenstein? Um, the abuse of power is presented by isolation um, and it tells us really that you can't play with the forces, that you can't control something that's been made um, and acting in the role of God and making those changes. Okay, so we're going to do a quick task. So um, I want you to consider the statement below. So is experimenting on humans ethically safe? So first of all, I'd like you to write the question on your paper and then I'd like you to bullet point your ideas. Um, just to support you, ethically means is it morally good or correct? So just from your point of view, I'd like you to think, um, you know, why are they doing this? Um, how are the experiments taking place? Is it safe? Why has it got to be on humans? Just jot down some of your ideas. So we're going to move on with Flowers for Algernon and, re and read reports four and five. Um, again, get your vocabulary builder sheet out just so you can add any particular words that maybe you're uncertain to that you can research and add to your list. But as we're reading, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think, um, identify what the doctor's plan um, is to do with Charlie. So do you agree that it's ethically safe? So whatever they plan to do with Charlie, do you agree that it's ethically safe? Progress report for Ma 8. They're going to use me. I'm so exited, I can hardly write. Dr. Neymar and Dr. Strauss had an argument about it at first. Dr. Neymar was in the office when Dr. Strauss brought me in. Dr. Neymar was worried about using me, but Dr. Strauss told him that Miss Kenyon re recommended me from the best of all the people who she was teaching. I like Miss Kenyon because she's a smart teacher. And she said, Charlie, you're going to have a check second chance. If you volunteer for this experimental, you might get smart. They don't know if it will be permanent, but there's a chance. And that's why I said, okay, even when I was scared, because she said it was an operation. She said, don't be scared, Charlie. You've done so much with so little. I think you deserve it most of all. So I got scared when Dr. Neymar and Dr. Strauss argued about it. Dr. Strauss said, um, I had something that was very good. He said, I had a good motivation. I never even knew I had that. I felt proud when he said that not everybody with an IQ of 68 had that thing. I don't know what it is or where I got it, but he said Algernon had it too. 
Algernon's motivation is the cheese they put in his box, but it can't be that because I didn't eat any cheese this week. Then he told Dr. Nemo something I didn't understand, so while they were talking, I wrote down some of the words. He said, Dr. Nemo, I know Charlie is not what you had in mind, as the first of your new breed of intellect, couldn't get the word, Superman. But most people, of low men, are host and uncoop. They are usually dull, a path, and hard to reach. He had a good nature. He's interested and eager to please. Dr. Nemo said, remember, he'll be the first human being ever to have intelligence tripled by surgical means. Dr. Strauss said, exactly. Look at how well he's learned to read and write for his low mental age. It's as great an achieve as you and I learning Einstein's three theory of Vitti without help. That shows the intense motivation. It's comparate. A tremend, achieve, I say we use Charlie. I didn't get all the words and they were talking too fast, but it sounded like Dr. Strauss was on my side and like the other one wasn't. Then Dr. Nemo nodded. He said, all right, maybe you're right. We will use Charlie. And when he said that, I got so exited, I jumped up and shook his hand for being so good to me. I told him, thank you, Doc. You won't be sorry for giving me a second chance. And I mean it like I told him. Like, after the operation, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to try awful hard. Progress report 5, Ma 10. I'm scared. Lots of people who work here, and the nurses, and the people who gave me the tests, came to bring me candy and wish me luck. I hope I have luck. I got my rabbit's foot, and my lucky penny, and my horseshoe. Only a black cat crossed me when I was coming to the hospital. Dr. Strauss says, don't be, so, don't be superstitious, Charlie, this is science. Anyway, I'm keeping my rabbit's foot with me. I asked Dr. Strauss if I'll beat Algernon in the race after the operation, and he said, maybe. If the operation works, I'll show that mouse that I can be as smart as he is, maybe smarter. Then I'll be able to read better and spell the words good and know lots of things and be like other people. I want to be smart like other people. If it works permanent, they will make everybody smart all over the world. They didn't give me anything to eat this morning. I don't know what it is about eating that has to do with getting smart. I'm very hungry, and Dr. Neymar took away my box of candy. That Dr. Neymar is a grouch. Dr. Strauss says I can have it after the operation. You can't eat before an operation. So I'd like you to consider the statement below. Experimenting on humans is important for the development of society. You should be allowed to experiment on people for the sake of science. So I want you to think, do you agree with this statement or do you disagree with this statement? You could have two sides to this, so that's absolutely fine as well. So on your paper, just jot down your ideas. I'll give you about five minutes. So just a quick reminder, our statement is experimenting on humans is important for the development of society and you should be allowed to experiment on people for the sake of science. So you should have noted down whether or not you agree or you disagree. You should have noted down some of your reasons why you've made that decision. Um, and you've got 10 minutes to incorporate now references and evidence from the novella. So I want you to look at the three slides that we've um, been reading through. Can you find some evidence to actually back up whether or not you agree or you disagree? And just to remind you that human experimentation is banned to some extent. You are not allowed to alter the DNA of a human in order to create a superior race or person. So just take that into consideration when you're looking for your quotes. So you've got 10 minutes, off you go. So let's revisit an extract from Frankenstein. Um, as we're reading, um, consider the effects of human experimentation of Dr. Frankenstein. How can I describe my emotions at this catastrophe? Or delineate the wretch whom with such infinite pains and care I've endeavoured to form? His limbs were in great proportion. I had selected his features as beautiful. Beautiful, great God, 
His yellow skin scarcely covered the work of muscles and arteries beneath. His hair was of a lustrous black and flowing, his teeth of pearly whiteness, but these luxuriances only formed a more horrid contrast with his watery eyes that seemed almost of the same colour as the dun white sockets in which they were set, his shriveled complexion and straight black lips. Okay, so recapping on our statement, so experimenting on humans is important for the development of society. You should be allowed to experiment on people for the sake of science. I want you to go back to your plan and add any new evidence um, based on the extract of Frankenstein. I want you to add your reasons to the paper and you've got five minutes to incorporate references and evidence and thinking about um, Dr. Frankenstein's motives now, now he, when he's reflecting back on his actions. So now you've got your evidence, I'd like you to um, construct just a brief speech to your friends or so people in your year group to explain your decision about human experimentation. In this, I'd like you to include, so second person, so you, so you're referring to your audience, and then also bringing you in together collectively by using first person, so we. I'd also like you to use some modal verbs such as could, should, would and may when you're giving suggestions of, you know, what could change, what they can do to work together. And those imperative commands of let's act now or immediately of how you need to um, act on what's been happening. So whether or not you agree or you disagree. So remember, human experimentation is banned to some extent and you are not allowed to alter the DNA of a human in order to create a superior race or person. To the right hand side of the slide, you've also got just a, a brief start. You can use this if you want, or you can alter it to um, your own start to a, um, to a speech. You've got 10 minutes. Okay, so finally, complete your self-assessment um, on your speech. Remember, if you are super confident in what you've done, so you're agreeing, um, if you were Fairly confident, but maybe need a little bit of support when we return to school, you're Amber. And if you feel like you do need quite a bit of support at the end of this and when we return to school, you are red.